Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at a simple little root building game called Trails of Tucana. This is one of those flip and write games in which we flip over a couple of cards, everybody has a sheet of paper in front of them, and you'll be building routes, connecting different villages to one another, connecting different features on these islands to those villages, and generally scoring victory points, trying to be the most effective with your network building. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this game, I'm going to show you on the table how it plays, we'll come on back after that, I'll tell you what I think of it. To set up the game, we're going to give each player one of these sheets here, a pencil. We're going to shuffle up the deck of land types here, and we set up the bonuses. You'll have a, a number one and a number two per letter if you are playing with five or more players. If you have fewer than that, then you just do the number ones. The secondary bonus would simply go away. So once that's done, we're going to shuffle up this deck of cards here so we can set up the game. You'll reveal one of these, and the players are going to letter these villages on the outside. I've already done that using this card here. And everybody starts in a different spot, so that the letter at the top, the D here, is actually here for me if I'm the first player. It would be there if I'm the second player, third player, and so on. And everything adjusts around that, so that we all have a slightly different setup. Once you've done that, this can go away, and you don't need it anymore. And then you're ready to begin. The game's going to be played over two stages. We're going to burn through this deck here twice. And after the first one, we're going to score some bonus points here for this section right there. Then at the end of the second time through the deck, we'll score those bonuses again, as well as we are going to score connections of villages and any bonuses we've written in this area here. So here's how it goes. Whoever wants can be the one flipping cards here, and you reveal two from the top of the deck. These are going to show you different land types. Here you have a breakdown of the frequency of these land types. For, for example, we have a desert here and a mountain. Desert is very likely to come up. There are eight of them. And then mountain cards, there are six of them. And everyone now is going to draw a line that bridges these two types of, uh, of locations. So for example... I might put a line from the center of this sand type to the center of this mountain, like so. My objective, of course, is to connect things on the board. Once everyone has done that, we reveal two more cards. And I just got a wild. This one lets uh, everybody pick whatever they want for it. So I'm going to say uh, desert to water. Water's a little less li likely to come up. There's only four of them. So I'm going to go from here, the center of that desert, to this water. And in fact, there's a little dragon there I'm trying to connect. So hopefully I can connect that, uh, these two to each other, and then connect this over to this A village. And that's going to start something good. We keep going through the deck, like I said, until there's a single card left. There will be one. And then we shuffle it up, score the first round, and go through it again. So what are we trying to do? What am I actually attempting to connect? Well, you have different features that show up on the board. There's an obelisk, a book, a toucan, uh, and a couple of other things there. And if you connect them to any village, you are going to circle the bonus. So, for example, that dragon there, if I connect it to that A village, I'm going to circle this right here. And I'm going to get four victory points every time I score the bonuses. However, there are two of every type. There's one there, and there's one there. If I connect both of them to villages, they don't have to go to the same village, just any village, then I'm going to circle in this secondary part right here, and that's going to get me more bonus points, but also one bonus uh, road immediately, anywhere I want to, ignoring uh, you know the cards. I can, I can put that anywhere I want. And it might even chain a new combination. If where I put that, I suddenly connect another thing, uh, the second version of something, I might get another bonus row. So you can chain these things together. That's what I am trying to do. So later on, let's say I did this, and then later on I did that. I connect my uh, first uh, water dragon there, and then later on maybe I did this one here, and I connect it to the E there, and that's how I got my second one, which gave me a bonus road. And with that bonus road, uh, oh, I might put that right there. I'm going to start working on this A village because the second way in which I score 
is by connecting the two places that have the same letter together. There's one A village and I'm connecting it ideally to this one. As soon as I do so, I am going to score 14 points right there. And if I'm the first person to do so, uh, or I do it at the same time as other people who are the first ones to do it, I'm going to get a bonus three victory points. But let's say I didn't do that. Let's say somebody else already scored this and they removed the card. Well, this other bonus is still here. So if I manage to do that later on, let's say I did that, and I connect it here, and then I connect it to there. You know what? I'm going to throw in this toucan just for good luck there. I'm going to go ahead and circle that. Look at that. Then I am going to score my 14 points and a bonus of two. So I would write that in this area here where the bonuses go. Anybody else who does it at the same time I'm doing it also gets the bonus. Then this goes away. And we continue. Once we've gone through the deck, then we score all the bonuses here. So I've got two, six points, and another five for 11 points. I put that right there. We shuffle this up, do it again. And at the end of the second time through the deck, let's say I also unlocked that one. And, uh, you know, I've got a few more connections on the board here. I did, let's say, I connected uh, E to E. That gave me 10 points. But by then, these bonuses were gone, let's say. And maybe I did a C to C, and I did that first. Which meant I got this five-point bonus. Right? Then the deck runs out, we do it again. I score all my bonuses again. So if you do them early, you're going to get them twice. And at this point, I would have 14 points there. And then the village connections, which are here, right here. So 10, 20, 36 for that. Bonuses, I have seven points in bonuses. And then I add all that up, and that is my final score. So you want to connect these early. But you also want these bonuses because you're going to score them twice. Plus, you get both features and you get a bonus road on top of it. Now, this is one side. This is the shorter side of this board. But if you play on the opposite side, you have the large uh, island, the Isla Grande. And this side, you are going to be playing three rounds of bonuses. There are three featured uh, items per type. And you'll, of course, play through the deck three times, not just twice. So a little bit longer, but same concept, same idea. It'll largely play out the same way. If you want the game to be a little bit longer, you can play on this side. Both are pretty much uh, the same. So there you go. That should give you an idea of how the game works. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. And that is Trails of Tucana. I really like this game. Now, Aporta Games, the company that puts this out... They've done a couple of other sort of roll and write games or flip a card and write. And the sort of precursor to this is a game called Avenue, which I really enjoy. I thought it was a great game. And in my opinion, I think this one takes those concepts and doubles down on them. Uh, you are now revealing two cards and creating a connection between two places, which is a new concept here. I think it works tremendously well. This is a fun game. So let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit more. I have one major, uh, or only one negative, I should say. It's not really a major negative. And that is the theme. The theme here is sort of, you know, a whatever theme. They needed something to pick. And, you know, the whole idea of you're, you're planting trails on little known islands. The thematic ties. The setting is fine. It's, it's some island you are exploring. The thematic ties don't make a lot of sense. How well, This is some of the strangest uh, mapping I've ever seen. You know, with people saying, I'm going to map a road between some desert and a forest. And then you sort of walk, you, you airdrop into the middle of the island, and, you know, it doesn't matter. The theme is, again, not why you show up to this game, is my point. Everything else I do like. The aesthetics are very nice. The game looks good. It's bright. Cards are well made. Uh, I like the graphic design on, on uh, Aporta games for the most part. Replayability. The boards are all identical, but I actually don't mind that. I, I think if, if they gave you a pad uh, that had, you know, 10 different island layouts, and then everybody picks one of those, uh, having all the same, of course, so that the game is fair, it's just sort of fake randomization, you know. It's all the same. If I still need to draw from here to here and the cards are going to come out the way they come out, 
it doesn't really matter what the island looks like as long as we all have the same one. I think setup randomization with the islands or rather the uh, villages being rotated per player, that's cool. That means you cannot just mirror what I'm doing and get the exact same thing I'm going for. So I like that. So replayability I don't have a problem with. There's also a couple of bonus cards that they give you in there. It's a little variant. And you can reveal one of those. And if you connect two like things, say like that dragon I was talking about to the other dragon, if you get them on the same network and you do that first, you get a little bonus. And there's one of those cards per different little feature on the island. So you only play with one of them. I like that. I, I would throw that in no matter what. It's such a simple thing. So I like that little variant. The game length is good. You have the two choices. Uh, it feels fairly short anyway. Even if you play on the larger island, it just, you know, you have a, you can sort of let it breathe a little bit more. But I like both. I have no problem with that. The game has a good amount of tension as you are getting uh, near the end of each of those rounds where you're thinking, come on, I really want to get this bonus so I can score it more than once. So I like that. The ease of play, very simple game. It's a, it's a straightforward concept. It works really well. It's still choices and you have things to think about, but the game play is, very, is, is uh, straightforward and simple. And lastly, the tactics, the luck, all those things. Yeah, there's luck, of course. You're flipping over a couple of cards. But I never find myself not having something interesting to decide. You know, do I start this this flip of a desert and, a, and water isn't good to me right now for what I've been working on. But maybe this is the time to start working on this over here. Because then that's going to pay off. And the game has a great concept. There's a, it, it feels very much like a root building game because in the later, say, second half of the game where you've got a nice network going, then just a couple of card flips, and suddenly you're connecting a whole side of the board to the other side of the board. Because you've already got the network in place. And in that sense, it kind of feels like Ticket to Ride for me. Where at first, you're laying out the grand groundwork, and then later on you have one ticket that says, go from way over here to way over here. And you look at the board and go, I've almost got that already. Just a couple more things here, boop, and I've, I've made that really long connection. This feels like that. I really like that. So there you go. Excellent game. Really enjoy it. And here is my bottom line for Trails of Tucana. A fast-paced and fascinating root-building game that feels both tense and very, very welcoming. So this is going to get a 9 out of 10 from me. That means a seal of excellence, and it is indeed an excellent game. I recommend it very much to anyone who enjoys the genre of having your own sheet and writing, you know, a connection on it. And anyone who is uh, sort of interested in the idea of a, you know, kind of like a ticket to ride, roll and write. That's sort of what this feels like in a way. And I think that's high praise. So again, really good game. Seal of excellence. Trails of Tucana. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.